Hey everybody, Pastor Matt Walker again, uh, talking to you today about gentleness, gentleness. Um, I waited yesterday, if you've been keeping up with this, you'll notice no video yesterday. Um, faithfulness is coming, it's coming. I'm going to drop these at the same time uh, for the purpose of this. They're coming out of the same spot uh, in the Bible. They're coming out of the exact same chapter. Uh, faithfulness and gentleness. Uh, Pastor Raymond Richardson the other day uh, from Foundation of Life Church here in Ennis, he, he posted up on Facebook and asked people, what is your absolute favorite verse in the Bible? And mine comes out of 2 Timothy chapter 2, uh, and I'll share that when we talk in the, in the, uh, faithfulness, in the faithfulness video. Um, but that got me reading this chapter and got me really studying out this chapter. Uh, and I found this gem and thought it went great with gentleness. And I'm here uh, at our church. I'm here at Anthony Drive. Um, thank you to our county commissioners. Uh, not to get too political, I'm not a huge fan of the lockdown. I understand it. Not a fan of it. Um, but thank you to all of our county commissioners, especially uh, Commissioner Lane Grayson, uh, for, for deliberating so lengthy yesterday and thank you a special thank you from the heart of a pastor um, putting in the clause even in the shelter in place uh, deal that uh, that pastors that staff can still come to churches if it's for video broadcasting that we can still come to get our message out to the people thank you for that I have three kids at home young kids and there's no quiet there so thank you thank you thank you for helping me to make these videos um, but gentleness I'm here at, at, at Anthony Drive Baptist Church uh, and I'm in our Willing Workers class, uh, which is predominantly um, an, an, a, seniors, a seniors class, uh, class for some of our older folks. Um, and I wanted to talk to you about gentleness, because in light of everything that's going on, we're realizing, and I, I, we knew before, but, but we're really focusing on our senior citizens being the most affected, being the ones who, I mean, that's why, honestly, we, we sh shut down. That's why we, we closed doors uh, for this little bit is because, you know, kids are not really getting it. Those of us that are healthy, I don't think it's this, you know, huge, scary thing that everybody's making out to be, you know, uh, colds, flu, whatever. Um, but I would hate to be a carrier and pass that along and not know um, and in so doing, harm any one of these precious ladies in this class. And so, uh, for that reason, for this reason, um, not to not to put any guilt or any or any blame. Hopefully, that's not how that comes off. But uh, but guys, Second Timothy chapter two. Let's get in the word real quick. Uh, gentleness. Paul writes to Timothy, his son in the faith, uh, a young man that he took him in. He groomed him up in, in the Lord. He, he taught him all the things of the church, and he's continuing to teach him. I mean, these are letters straight to Timothy, uh, and are really instructional letters on how Timothy is to conduct business in the church, what kind of man he's supposed to be, what he can expect. Um, but as we as we read this, let's look at it. It says this, uh, chapter chapter two, verse twenty three. It says, "Have nothing to do with foolish, ignorant controversies." You know that they only breed quarrels. So the first thing he tells him here, because he's told him in just the, the earlier verses, get away from the, 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 your youthful lust. Get away from your youthful passions, man. You've got you've to learn to be mature in Christ. You've got to learn to be able to be self-controlled. You've got to learn all of these things. And then he says, just have nothing to do with foolish controversies. Have nothing to do. Um, and that's not... That's not to say that somebody that comes to ask you a question or somebody that has their own beliefs, that's not to say don't engage that person. Um, what that says is this. You're going to find people in ministry and you're going to find people in life who are constantly pulling up what ifs. Or they're constantly pulling up, and I'm going to put this in quotations, facts that they have found online um, or they have found through some crazy, uncredible source. Um, and, they're just, and they're just trying to get the rise out of you. That's the reason I... Will not, a lot of times, no, ever, I, I, I do not. I, I will not engage in spiritual conversations online. I just won't do it. Um, not for the fact that I'm not trying to further the gospel, but for the fact of, it, you're at a lose-lose. You're, you're at a lose-lose. Um, it, it becomes name-calling, and it becomes tantrums, and it becomes negativity, and it becomes all of these things, and, and people are constantly just going to get entrenched in the belief they had before, 
and it really does no good. I'm not able to communicate the things that Paul says to communicate here through text or through Facebook or through Twitter or through any of you know Instagram, any of those things. I'm not able to get through to the emotional side. And I'm not able to, to hit you on a personal level and talk to you like a person. Uh, I think too often we sit behind the keyboard and we spew out these quote-unquote facts. Um, man, we're just, we're just destroying each other. So have nothing to do with those things. You know that they only breed fights. You know that they only start arguments. And so if they start arguments, man, what is the point? And the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but be kind to everyone. You don't go around, Christians, you don't walk around picking fights. That's not who we are. That, that, that's not what we do. Um, we're kind. We're gentle. We're, we're peaceful people. Kind to whom? Kind to everyone. Kind to everyone. Let that sink in. Not just your friends, not just your church folks, everyone. We're kind. Um, it's our job to display the kindness of Christ to a world that doesn't understand kindness, that doesn't understand joy. That's our, that's our position. Um, we are to be able to teach. We must be able to teach. And not maybe in some lengthy, deep, you know, philosophical or... or, or uh, a theological way, but you should be able, number one, as a Christian, to give your testimony, to tell what Christ has done in your life. And that's going to be the most impactful thing that you can share with somebody. This is what happened to me, for me. Um, number two, you should be able to present a plan of salvation. You should be able to present some sort of gospel message. Even if it's just pulling out a track and going through the Roman road. Man, that thing is still super effective. It still works. It's still scripture. It's still God-breathed. It's still alive and powerful. Don't count it out. So maybe you can't sit down and juggle all of these crazy, deep, you know, what-if thoughts. What you can do is sit down and share Jesus Christ and share what you know. Share what you know. Some of y'all have been in church, man, like 30 years. You should be experts. You should be experts. I mean, think about it. If you took driver's education for 30 years, once a week, twice a week, some of you, and if you're in that joker reading that book every day, after 30 years... You should be able to ace driver's ed. You should be able to teach it. You should be able to instruct it. You should be able to write the book. Unfortunately, a lot of us look at Christianity as a sideline deal. Well, we're finding out now that that's not the case. The world needs you, Christians. Step up. Teach. Teach in whatever capacity you can. Tell people the good news of Jesus Christ. Do it. Right now. Go. No, wait. Finish this video. Then go. Um... The Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but be kind to everybody. Be able to teach patiently enduring evil. Now, let's be careful with this. That is not patiently just uh, turning a blind eye to the evilness or to the sin in the world. That's not what it says, because in just a second, he's going to say you need to correct people. What that means is this. In patiently enduring the evil that is inflicted on you... As you walk out these things in Christ, because as you walk them out, you're not going to be popular. You're not going to be invited to the party. You're going to be talked about. You're going to be laughed about. All of these things are going to hit on you as a Christian. And Paul says, Timothy, you have to be ready and you have to be able to endure all of the ridicule and the harshness that's coming. Uh, and I know even now, you know, a lot of us, as we continue to, as we continue to, to trust in Jesus Christ and, and to believe that he is gonna that he's gonna solve all of these things, man. The folks who are who are science fanatics, man, they're coming out of the woodwork and they're you know, wow, Jesus can't do this, God's not gonna do this. Where's your God now? Blah, 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 blah. Guys, you have to have a thick skin if you're gonna be in this game. You have to, and you have to patiently endure the evil that is coming. But handle everyone with kindness. Remember, you are fighting. The unseen evil forces in the air, not the people. Not the people. Every person is made in the image of Christ, and in so being made in the image of God is valuable, has worth. And if they have worth, it's your job to love them. You don't fight each other, you fight the 
forces of Satan that are at work. And we do that through the Word. We do that through prayer. We do that through correcting, rebuking, teaching, in gentleness, and in love. Watch it. Watch what he says. You have to patiently endure evil, correcting your opponents with gentleness. With gentleness. Correct them with gentleness. I thought about this. You know, when it talks about Christ being the shepherd, when a sheep would go off the path, man, the shepherd didn't pull out a stick and just beat the sheep over the head and tell it to get back in line. That's not what happened. The shepherd had a long staff, and what he would do is he would just hold out the staff, and he would just place it on the side of the sheep, and he would just kind of guide him back, gently, back into the fold. And that's exactly the, the thought process here, is that as we love people and we correct them, we do it gently, and we turn it. And that's going to take time, and it's going to take effort. It's much easier to pull the rod out and beat them over the head. It's so much easier. That's not what we're called to do. Invest the time. Put in the time, put in the effort, right, to get people back. And put in the effort because this, perhaps, God may grant them repentance, leading to a knowledge of the truth. They may come to their senses, and they may escape from the trap, the snare, that the devil has placed them in after being captured by him to do his will. So this is why we're gentle, because Satan is not gentle. Satan busts in, right? Like a lion looking for someone to devour. Satan comes in and he is a terror. But Christ came. And he's gentle. And I know I've got Christian friends that will disagree with that statement. Everything about Jesus was gentle. Everything about him was servanthood. It was lowliness. It was meekness. Not weakness. That's why I'm in this room. We talk about gentleness. A flower. We have to be gentle with a flower so we don't crush it. We also have to be gentle with a bomb so that it doesn't destroy us. Guys, gentleness is not this weakness that the world sees. Gentleness is handling things with appropriate hands so that everyone, everyone has the opportunity to to make it out alive. And that's why we're here. Because there are folks walking around out here that have no idea the truth. They have no idea that they are destined for hell. And your gentle response, your gentle teaching, your gentle touch could be the thing that brings them back into repentance and that brings them into a relationship with Jesus Christ. And it's your responsibility to get out there and just tell them and love them and share it with them. You guys be blessed. We love you. Thanks.